and that's looking pretty righteous. Hey everybody, this is Richard, and welcome back to Making Something From Nothing. What you see here on the table is stuff to do anodizing. If you've never done it in your shop, and you've always considered doing it, it's really not all that difficult, so I'm going to give you the rundown on how I do it, the chemicals that I'm using, the times required, and basically give you an overview of exactly how I do it. And we're going to anodize this part today. So let me bring you in a little bit closer. We'll go over some of the stuff that's on the table and we'll anodize a part. Now the first thing I'm going to cover is the solution to actually anodize the part. Now I mixed up a, a rather large batch of this a while back. I did a test part yesterday just to make sure the chemicals were still good. I used four quarts of distilled water to three quarts of battery acid. Now everybody has their own variation on that but that's what I use and it works. So we've got uh, maybe a quart and a half in here. The next thing I have over here is the black dye which the part will be dipped into. This was made from mixing one bottle of the RIT brand dye. It's available at uh, grocery stores. It's very cheap. I mix one gallon of distilled water and dump in a whole bottle of that. Over on the far burner I've got some degreasing solution. That's just simple green mixed with uh, some distilled water and that's heating up to I don't know about 175, 180 degrees. Now with the anodizing process everything is temperature controlled. This solution here the dye as well as the uh, degreasing. So it comes in handy to have a couple of cheap digital thermometers on hand. This is the part we're going to be anodizing today. I turned this earlier this week. What you're looking at right here is two cathodes. The current's going to run in between those and your part's going to be suspended in the center. And they're just connected with an aluminum wire. So that's going to sit right in that tank just like that. So here's our part to be anodized. And what we need to do is, in order for the electrical connection to be good, I've got an aluminum wire. This is an aluminum quarter 20 thread that I've got going into the side of the part. And I'm just going to put this thumb screw on and tighten it down. This section of the part is going to be turned down after the anodizing. It was left on here just so I could make a connection. Because where the connection's made, it's not going to anodize. Now in order to be able to suspend this in that solution right there, I'm just going to go ahead and hook it up to this little bus bar. The most important thing about anodizing is the part must be totally free of grease, fingerprints, everything. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and hit this first with some brake cleaner. Now it's very important not to touch this part after this point. So after the brake cleaner I'm taking uh, some simple green in case the brake cleaner left any kind of residue. Now this is distilled water so we're going to go ahead and rinse this guy out. Now we're going to move over to the hot plate and we're going to drop this in some simple green that's heated up to about 185 degrees. And while that's cooking away, this is another container, just distilled water, to go ahead and rinse that guy after we pull it out. 
Well, just to make sure I wasn't trapping any air during the anodizing process, I went ahead and flipped the part to where it's sitting vertical like that. Regular tap water has chemicals in it, minerals. Okay, over here I set the container of battery acid in this larger container. If it becomes necessary to use this, I'll explain what it's for. If not, you can ignore it for now. But I've got the negative hooked up to the cathode. This cathode is connected to that one via that wire. Okay, our wires are hooked up. I'm going to set this on 2 amp, 12 volt, and plug it in. Now we're going to let this sit at 2 amp, 12 volt for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to swap it over to 6 amp, 12 volt for 40 minutes. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but we've got bubbles coming off uh, both the cathodes, which means we've got good electrical connection. The ideal operating temperature of that liquid is to be about 68 to 70 degrees. But it's putting out some nasty fumes and you don't want to do this in a, an enclosed space. I'm out here in the shop and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and x it out of here and come back in 15 minutes and swap over the uh, battery charger. So really, the most important thing about anodizing is temperature. So we're at 66 on this, so we're good. I've got another thermometer set up over here, and I'm bringing this up to 134-ish, between 130 and 135. It's right at about 136. So we're just going to go ahead and maintain that. What we have over here is another fresh batch of clean distilled water. And I'm going to bring that up to about 180 degrees. So basically your part's making a journey from a 68 to 70 degree temperature over to the dye bath for about 20 minutes at between 130 and 135. Then it goes into water, distilled water, that's about 180, and that sits for about five to eight minutes. The cool water bath kept us uh, right around 67, so that worked out good. Take that part out. So go ahead and rinse it in distilled water. You want to rinse the part off in distilled water so you don't contaminate the dye. And we're just going to drop that guy in there for 20 minutes. Well, it's been in here about nine minutes, and let's take a look at it. It's taken on a nice black color. Okay, our 20 minutes is up, so I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out. And that's looking pretty righteous. And what we want to do is go ahead and rinse it again with distilled water. You're going to see some of that dye coming off. nothing to be alarmed about. So here's the anodized and dyed part. Now we're going to go ahead and seal those pores, dropping it into 
180 degree water. Okay, here's our part fresh out of the uh, sealer. More distilled water. Now sometimes the parts will have a chalky appearance. It's no big deal. All you do is you just wet a cloth and just give it a good wipe down. And here we got a midnight black aluminum part. Well there we go. A black anodized piece of aluminum just like the customer wanted. Turned out real nice. The recipe I have out there in the shop that I use works pretty good. This uh, fat section it's all going to be turned off so ignore the ugliness right there. But uh, one word of advice if you ever want to anodize something and you don't want the threads anodized you have to plug that with uh, aluminum. As you can see there's no anodizing on the inside of those threads there. But hopefully if you want to do some anodizing over in your shop, this gave you some ideas. Give you an idea how to do it. At least how I do it. Seems to work pretty well. Please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw here. Hit the like button. It helps get the, the video shown around. And in the meantime, this is Richard. The channel is making something from nothing. And I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.